How are you doing today, sir? I'm good, Steve. Uh, I just want to start with, and I, I think I've told you this in the past, I'm a huge fan of your work. It is a, uh, it's a real thrill to talk to you today. Well, thank you. Um, so I have to start with, uh, uh, I want to go back to earlier in your career, and I'm very curious, how long did it take for you to forgive Lawrence Kasdan from cutting you out on the big chill? Well, I have a different view of that. He, he basically really, you know, helped launch my career. Um, and he had nothing. To, uh, I, I was, the moment he, the part was mine, I actually thought my career was happening. That was even before we shot it. Then we shot it. The movie came out. It was a giant hit and I wasn't in it. What you have to understand is I, 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 yeah, of course I would have liked to be in it. Of course, all the friends who knew I was going to be in it, I had to explain that I wasn't in it. But honestly, everything that needed to happen to me, his endorsement of me, him putting me in it, my career was in motion. And if I thought that was my one and only chance to be in a movie, I might have been disappointed if I was a person just plucked off the street and said, hey, would you stand in for this role for a second? And then it got cut out. You know, maybe maybe I'm incredibly disappointed because that was my I, I felt that everything that needed to happen happened. Uh, that experience informed me a lot about how I conducted myself. Well, also, you got to spend time on set and learn from a great filmmaker uh, how how it all works. That's exactly what I mean. It, it all it, it all happened for me there. So many things I was able to take away from that experience. Uh, is it safe to assume that this movie is taking place in like an alt universe where a baby from the sky didn't land in your and Diane's yard? I'm talking about Superman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, it, well, I, I, it's not that I don't understand your question. It, it, you broke up halfway through, but uh, oh, yeah, I, I, get, I get what you're saying. Mom, Pa, Kent. Um, well, you know, it's, it's safe to say that I didn't know where this story was going to go when I read it. I knew Diane was going to be a part of it. So, that was a, a plus, but it took me on a real authentic journey. And it, it took me, uh, it's it, right away as um, a kind of a foreboding happened and, and it never let up. Uh, it's a man understanding that his wife is on a mission and she won't be stopped. And it's a measure of love. It's a measure of stubbornness. It's a measure of, ah, but we've all been there. And I thought, that it was just magically worked in a movie. You know, we saw a real relationship, a real love story set against almost a horror film, if you will. Yeah, one of the things that I really responded to is your character um, doesn't speak a lot and it's only when he feels like he has to say something. Um, can you sort of talk about, was that always in the script? Did you sort of add to that in terms of like the minimal dialogue? No, it was a beautiful script. I, I just uh, elected to take my, my time with it because, I mean, I could see the words and I understood that they were measured. And I think uh, with our, the women in our life, we actually have to choose our words carefully, especially when someone is emotionally charged as uh, the Diane character was. Um, it was an interesting platform in which to get to this this ending that was, we don't really see coming, but we could guess at, and George could guess at it. No, completely. Um, the other thing I really responded to is that, you know, there's a lot of actors that might not be willing to play someone who gets their ass kicked. Um, I, and one of the things about your character is he's not superhuman, he's a normal person. Um, and uh, can you sort of talk about that, that you, you know, you, you're playing someone with limitations in this film? Yeah, he was limited uh, as a result of some of the details of the film. I don't want to really give away, but, you know, we can learn a lot in defeat. And I remember watching a giant and seeing um, uh, Rock Hudson in that particular movie, who was a bigot, a racist, if you will. It was an epic movie, George Stevens, about three hours long. And I remember at the end, life had dealt him a lot of realities, a lot of blows. I don't know if you know the movie I did, yeah. or study it at all, but he ends up in a, in a diner with his Mexican grandchild and he fights because he sees the, the child discriminated against and the mother humiliated that it was discriminated against. And he fights with a man, a, a Korean vet. And you have this typical Hollywood beautiful star, Rock Hudson fighting this epic fist fight and he loses. He gets beat up. 
That's not how movies normally go. And in the end, he's sitting against the wall, defeated. The guy actually puts a sign over his head. But he fought for his grandchild. And at the end, Elizabeth Taylor goes over to him and sees this man who traditionally won, historically won. And in defeat, she looked at the reason he fought. And she says, you never stood taller. And we can learn something from the movies about how we conduct ourselves, our gestures, what we commit to about, you know, trying to protect the people we love from their own worst instincts. And he does lose. I get that. But it didn't bother me. I understood that you don't always win. On that note, I need to go. I just want to say congrats on the movie. And as always, a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you.